Welcome back to On The Couch with NMC. I'm your host, Anthea Nyombo. Today we're going to dive into a topic that is still a taboo in Namibia, cancer. And to help me with that is Dr. Lina. Welcome, Dr. Lina. Thank you so much, Anthea, for having me. Dr. Lina, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm Dr. Lina Iambo, a clinical and radiation oncologist at the Venduk Central Hospital, mm -hmm. as well as the Namibian Oncology Center. I treat cancer using chemotherapy as well as radiotherapy. That sounds interesting. I can't wait. Let's get into it. Dr. Lina, can you explain what is cancer? Thank you, Anthea. For you to understand the abnormal, you should first understand the normal. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's start with the normal. Yes. In normal circumstances, our body is made up of cells mm -hmm. that grow and multiply on a daily basis. These cells are able to multiply, but then when they are done with their work, they die. Mm -hmm. programmed death. Now in the case of cancer, these cells are growing and multiplying uncontrollably, so they form tumor or what we would call a mess. And this mess, when it carries certain properties, that is able to grow, number one, mm -hmm. able to invade structures around it, or able to spread to parts of the body other than where it started. That is what we call malignant yeah. cells uh -huh. and that's what cancer comes from. Just a quick question before we get to the common cancers in Namibia. Is it true that we are all born with cancer cells? That is not true. We are born with normal cells but in the process of growing they might uh, lose their normality and that's when they start dividing abnormally. Okay, so you heard it? We are not born with cancer cells. So doctor, what are the common cancers that are found in Namibia? We have blood cancers, we have solid cancers. Uh, the main common cancers in Namibia mm -hmm. are number one, breast, mm -hmm. then uh, cervical cancer, that's the cancer of the mouth of the womb, mm -hmm. and then prostate, and then we have cancers like Kaposi sarcoma, that's cancer of the skin, very common in patients with HIV. And then there are lymphomas, which are cancer of the blood, and then cancer of the oral cavity. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So of those common ones that you just mentioned, which ones are the ones that have the higher death rate in Namibia recorded to date? Surprisingly, cervical cancer, which is supposed to be preventable and curable is one of the cancers that cause a lot of death in Namibia, then breast and prostate. And all these cancers have got screening methods available. It's cancers that one can somehow have control over. Mm -hmm. So what are the signs of these cancers that you just mentioned? The signs and symptoms of this? Signs and symptoms of cancer will depend on the stage of the cancer. Okay. In the initial stages, usually a person might not have symptoms at all. Okay. And then when the cancer continue growing and advancing, that's when now signs will come in. It can be anything from pain, from uh, abnormal discharge from the private part, if it's uh, cervical mm -hmm. cancer, it can be uh, something feeling just a lump in your breast. So signs and symptoms of cancers are very different depending on what cancer we are talking about and how advanced it is. Mm -hmm. So what are the treatments of these cancers, especially those that you have experience with? So like I mentioned uh, before, we have blood cancers and then we have solid cancers. In the cases of blood cancers, the mainstay of treatment is chemotherapy, which is strong medicines that we give via uh, a drip because in the whole body as you understand it's blood cancer so it can be anywhere in the body yes so we give this medicine in the drip and then it kills the cancer in the process in the event of uh, solid cancers mm. the mainstay of 
treatment is surgery operation uh, that is usually just possible if someone has come while the cancer is still in the early stages mm -hmm. otherwise then we move from surgery to chemotherapy and radiotherapy so the stage of the cancer plays a big role in the treatment so when you say solid cancer what what are you referring to i mean uh you have a tumor or a mess that you're feeling oh, okay. Where, okay. whereas in the event of blood cancer it's just cells in the blood circulating in the blood uh -huh. it's also it's, it's something almost like if i have a lump in my breast will that be a kind of considered as a solid cancer definitely so moving on what is the preventative measures of cancer the main um, thing is lifestyle mm -hmm. when i say lifestyles i'm looking at things like diet mm -hmm. exercises and then just um, taking care of yourself like going for uh, checkups regularly although in that case it will not be preventative anymore it's more of you want in case there is cancer coming it needs to be uh, picked up early that will be screening mm -hmm. okay but diet is very important uh, lifestyle like uh, smoking not to smoke and then uh, exercises your physical activity level so if one has a history of cancer in the family how would you advise the person for preventative measures or how can the person basically see uh, how to not get cancer or just to be on the lookout for it that's a very good question if one has history of cancer in their family the risk of them getting the cancer is actually high mm -hmm. that's in cancers like breast prostate cancer of the womb yes so if you have such a case a patient with cancer in your family number one what you need to identify is how close is that person to you mm -hmm. um, that's what we will term a generation yes there if it's your first generation which means it's your parent or your sibling the risk is higher oh so that is when you need you really need to be vigilant and you need to go for screening for example, let's take an example mm. of breast cancer. October is breast cancer month, so yes. I'm going to talk more about that. So for example, if your mother or your sister is diagnosed with breast cancer, then your risk of getting breast, breast cancer is also on a higher side. Mm -hmm. So you need to start uh, doing uh, self-breast examination or going for clinical breast examination or where you are able, especially for people with yes. medical aids and things, they can go for screening methods. We have several of them available, mm -hmm. starting from something as simple as an ultrasound of the yes. breast, uh, then coming to mammogram, mm -hmm. and then uh, MRI or magnetic resonance uh, investigation of the breast. The age at which you start with this screening is determined by your risk like i said if you have someone so close to you that has cancer then it's also very important and crucial for you to start those uh, processes. screening processes earlier in uh, normal uh, circumstances like general population yes. uh, i will advise women to start their screening process at the age of 40. okay but if you have someone in the family that has cancer earlier. then you do it earlier you look at how old was the person your sister or your mom diagnosed mm -hmm. and you try to do it at least even five years earlier than the age they were diagnosed and for men what would, what would you say the age would be, especially now if you don't have prostate cancer of history in your family? So just as a man, if you want to go and check, which, which age would you advise? Usually 40 to 45 years of age. And if you have history? Younger. Younger. So you can even be as young as 30. 30, 35. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So doctor, what can we as family and friends do 
to help the person that is diagnosed with cancer or suffering from cancer? What can we do being to be the support system? First of all, I would say try to understand cancer. The number one thing is that the diagnosis of cancer is very devastating. Mm -hmm. For someone to just hear they have cancer, yes. it's very emotionally and psychologically difficult for yeah. that. So the first thing is to be there for them, mm -hmm. to be there for them physically, emotionally and psychologically give the support. That's with the diagnosis. And when they are getting treatment, depending on what treatment they are getting, yeah. um, treatment of cancer comes with quite a number of side effects um, as far as things like even just eating. Someone will lose their appetite or they are mm. vomiting all the time when they are getting their chemotherapy. So the best you can be as a family member is to help them. Cook for them prepare food because even if they have poor appetite or they are vomiting they still need the food to be strong so that they are able to take the medicine that they are mm. getting so emotional support physical support and spiritual support okay. so doctor why do you think cancer is still deemed as a taboo in namibia while it's while it's very common that's one uh, question one will find difficult to answer. Number one, we know that hardly anyone goes out to look for cancer. Yes. Yes, it's true that there are some cancers that are like lifestyle cancers. We, we know maybe someone uh, um, uh, was sexually irresponsible and that's how they end up getting things like cervical cancer. But in most cases, cancer is not anybody's fault. Mm. So it's really difficult to understand why cancer is still taken as a taboo. There's so much stigma out there. Yeah. Where we are supposed to be giving support, we end up blaming the person. Uh, the person. Yeah. And then people tend to not be free. Mm. You would find people, even if they are diagnosed, the family member doesn't know. Even the closest of their people. So we really need to break this. We really need to make people aware that cancer is a disease. You are not guilty. You are not at fault for mm, having it. Yes. It's a treatable disease. People need to start understanding that cancer can be cured. The very important thing is that it must be picked up early. And that can only be done if we are going for screening. Yes. And if it picked up early, it can be treated, it can be cured. You can live longer a normal lifestyle. So just basically sensitizing the people on cancer and not making it a huge stigma or a huge thing. Exactly. And wow. we need to realize that it's really a problem. In yes. a population of 2.4 or 5 million and with the number of cancers, uh, cases that mm. we are getting and the number of deaths that we are getting from cancer, we really need to acknowledge and realize it's a problem. We need to speak about it, be it in our family, be it in our community, school, church, wherever wherever you find yourself and you get a chance to talk about it. Besides the cancer screenings that NMC does on their wellness days and fitness days, where else can people go and get screened? Well, uh, there are different places, centers, clinics in the country mm -hmm. uh, where one can go for screening. Uh, number one thing is the state clinics mm -hmm. and hospitals where, can, where you can go for your pap smears, you can go for your uh, clinical breast examination. At the Venduk Central Hospital, we actually have a walk-in breast clinic where one can go for examination and if anything or any action is needed from there, they guide the person further. Uh, at the private center, which is the Namibian Oncology Center, we do screening there. The good thing is that uh, most of the medical aids pay for that. Mm -hmm. So one can just make a booking, say they want screening and they just come in, one of our doctors will examine them. The other center is uh, the Cancer Association of Namibia, yes. which also has walk-in clinics. Uh, they do most of the screening, especially on cervical cancer, breast mm -hmm. cancer and prostate cancer. 
uh, they do it at a fee but not a huge amount and the good thing is that they travel around the country yes. to set up mobile clinics or go to different clinics in the region to do all these things so they are one of the main uh, and core um, people who play a big role in uh, screening of cancer so they're basically making it really available for everyone yes we have realized yes. cancer is a problem and we really need to act and do something about it thank you so much doctor this has been really enlightening any last words before we leave like i said talking about cancer has to become mm -hmm. our daily norm yes. if there's such a word <laughs> yes. so because we, we are seeing things every yes. day and people are coming in advanced stage where we can't really help them anymore. Yes. Whereas if we give health education, we raise awareness out there, then uh, people will find it easy to talk about it, to be open about it and to seek help at the right time. Once again, thank you, Dr. Lina, for joining us on the couch. I do hope everyone has a better understanding of cancer and that it's not a death sentence if early detected. To find out more on how NMC caters for their members on the oncology benefit, please check out our video that explains more about that. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media platforms so you do not miss out on any of our videos. Until next time, it is goodbye for now. Bye-bye.